is Natalie Sisson, and I'm feeling fit. Da -na 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 -na. I knew that I would now. I am feeling fit. I am feeling energetic. I am feeling freaking amazing, if I'm really honest about it, because for the last three and a half, almost four weeks, I've been on a 30 day clean living challenge, which ultimately means I'm eating foods in the most natural state possible, where possible organic foods. I'm cooking like a mofo and this girl never really cooks. I am loving what I'm eating. I'm creative in my kitchen, which is over there. Uh, in addition to that, I am making smart food choices. I'm sleeping better and I've taken up CrossFit as opposed to Ultimate Frisbee and Tennis and Gym Workouts and it's kicking my butt and I am loving it. And the point of this vlog today is that I just really wanted to talk about why don't we invest in our health the way we invest in our teams, in businesses, in travel, in holidays and everything else that we do. Like, why? I just don't understand. Like, this, this thing here, this body, is the most important thing in the world that we have. And so now when I see people drinking coffee, like crazy, by the way, one cup a day is okay, uh, eating fries, chomping out on burgers, filling themselves with alcohol. I mean, don't worry, I've done all this before myself, but always, always in moderation. And going on this clean living challenge, I think was just the perfect kick up my booty. <clears throat> this booty here was the kick up the booty that I needed to finally focus on how awesome I could feel on an everyday basis just by making better choices. Now, let me take you back on a little story. So I think this has been coming for a long time for me because this year I am turning the ripe young age of 40 and my quest for turning 40 is to be in the best shape of my life at this upcoming age and I feel like I am really really close to that and so I had that in the back of my mind for probably the last six or eight months. I mean don't get me wrong I play ultimate frisbee, I like going to the gym, I eat pretty well, but you know, when I was in Portugal, there was chorizo, there was cheese coming out of everywhere, which was amazing. The wine is like two or three euros for a fantastic bottle. And I was just like living life, enjoying. I was surfing for sure. I was doing yoga. Yes, I was working hard. Yes, but I wasn't really looking after me. I was being very, very overindulgent in many ways. So it kind of got to the end of Christmas and I was like, you know, you're gonna have to make some some pretty serious changes here. Because as an entrepreneur, I don't wanna be tired partway through the day, which I was starting to feel. I don't wanna be have that brain fog that we all talk about. I don't wanna to have to turn to coffee to get my energy. I don't wanna do any of that. And then this lady came into my life. Da, da, da. How did I not ever know about Libby Weaver, Dr. Libby Weaver? Um, this book changed my life thanks to a lovely lady, Karen, uh, who was away on this holiday where she said, oh, you should just read my copy. And I just got stuck in and I loved it so much. I went and bought my own copy. I can't remember the last time, one, that I bought a book about health and fitness ever. And two, that I bought a book that is not telling me what to do. It's informing me of what I'm doing to myself. So much so that I was reading stuff in here and going, holy crap. Why am I doing that to myself? Newsflash, I shouldn't be. Um, I just want to give you this, oh my god, that's so freaky. I'm not kidding, I just opened to the page that I wanted to come to. So it, it might be called Women's Wellness Wisdom, but guys, this one's for you as well. Okay, so don't worry. But in this book, she goes over all sorts of things around your skin conditions that you may have, sleep, about alcohol about what caffeine does but she does it in a way that's like here's what's going on in your body when you do these things so that you step back and go man why am I doing those things and the, the biggest eye-opener for me out of many things in here is when she talked about the vicious cycle so I'm going to give you a little little close-up of this and I'm going to talk you through it here's the vicious can you see that oh sorry bad lighting all right no I'm just going to talk you through it so basically here's how it goes you have coffee consumption in the morning, like one, two, even three cups. By the time it's the afternoon, you have a sugar crash in the afternoon because you've been carbo-loading, eating rice and pasta and bread. 
So you basically have more coffee again around there or you basically have more sugar like donuts and all those things just give you a bit of a rush. And then by the evening you have too much alcohol so then you have a shitty sleep and then you wake up in the morning feeling like crap so you go back to, yes, more coffee. And basically we're just adding tons of toxins into our liver and our liver is an incredible, incredible organ but there's only so much it can do when we're throwing this crap at it. Um, so... It was just really interesting. Liver loaders is what she calls them. Uh, alcohol, caffeine, trans fats, refined sugars, synthetic substances like pesticides, which are all over our food, and um, actually also infections, for example, viruses such as glandular fever. I actually had glandular fever when I was a kid, uh, well, a teenager. I caught it off my friend. She had it and she was just exhausted for three months and then I got it and wondered why I felt exhausted. They picked it up in my bloodstream later, just a shocker. So imagine being on caffeine withdrawal symptoms all the time, being that lethargic. That's what glandular fever does to you. Not fun. So anyway, highly recommend this book. I will put it in the links below. There's just so many, so many good things in here. So this started getting me informed in a big way about my body, my health, my mindset. And what I love is in the first chapter, she basically says this beautiful thing, which is... I'm hopeful that this book will offer you simple tools that foster an even healthier and happier life, helping you to appreciate even more deeply how miraculous your body truly is and the gift that you are to the world. That just sets the tone for the rest of this book, which is awesome. So after reading that, I then started in on the lovely Karen and Sarah's 30-day clean living challenge. Now, Karen's been a member of my community. She's been a coaching client. She's come to my retreats. Um, but I've seen her on this path of growing more and more and more. She's just super passionate about real health and real energy. And they ran this clean living challenge last year. They've run it several times. And I I didn't partake. Like, I, I signed up and I did nothing. There was a daily email coming in and I pretty much ignored all of them. Sorry, Karen and Sarah. I was too busy. Uh, I was working too hard. I was traveling too much. And frankly... I didn't even have access to a kitchen, I didn't have access to grocery stores. It was it was just not good timing. And that was legitimate. It wasn't an excuse. I feel that was legitimate. This time, however, I was like, screw that, I'm signing up. So I signed up, started night the jam. Uh, at the time of this recording, it is the 2nd of February. So I'm into week four. Every week you get this really cool meal plan. You get like an idea of what you can eat each day. You get recipes that are just freaking awesome. Um, and... I took myself off to Moore Wilson's, which is a really great organic and sort of grocery store here. It's not all organic, but they've got incredible quality food. And I got the shopping list and I was like, yep, thanks, Karen, Sarah. And I took 30 minutes to buy a complete new pantry. And then I went to my pantry, which is usually barren, and to my fridge, which is frankly usually barren, because I'm the digital nomad who travels and eats out and spends all her money on that. And I stocked it up. I might even show you a bit of my pantry. And every time I open it now, I'm proud. I'm like, ooh, what's in there? And it's incredible. And I started cooking. And I started reading the recipes. And I started enjoying it. And I started feeling that it was quite a cathartic experience. And I started surprising myself, quite frankly. Because for those of you who know me well, I, you know, I don't cook. I purposefully stayed out of the kitchen from when I was a kid so that I wouldn't end up in the kitchen being a housewife. I don't know, it's, it's a weird way of thinking, but that's what I thought. I'm actually quite a good cook. I just never really enjoyed it. There were other things to do. There was work, there was business, there was frisbee, there was hanging out with friends. And now I, I, I get, I'm no chef by the way, but I get and understand why people actually love the act of it and putting love into your food, um, the taste, the sensation. So that was step one, new pantry, new grocery list. Step two, become a cook. Um, and some of these things are so super simple to do and cook and prepare. And then you have it like two or three more meals out of it. The third thing I noticed was step three is heck budget conscious. Like I've added up my, cause I'm geeky like this. I've added up what I've spent on groceries. So the first shop was about 150 to $200. And then I've added up what I've had on meals out since doing this challenge. I've only eaten out about six or seven times over the last three weeks and that combined has more than tripled yeah, what I've spent on groceries. So in the first week, I cooked 21 meals. And I swear they cost me about 5 or $6 each. And they were all super, super healthy. 
Um, and I just felt like I was filling myself with good stuff. So that's been an enlightenment for me. Then the next step to that was going, oh, organic, because back to Dr. Libby Weaver, she talks about if you can always buy organic. And it's not just that the animals have been better bred, it's the soil. There's so much shit that goes into the soil that we're then consuming. So every single thing comes down to the soil and what's in it and how plants grow and how foods grow. So I've been switching to organic and stuff has been tasting great. It's not that much more expensive. It's much better prepared. <laughs> There's no chemicals. You feel ethically more responsible. Um, and on the whole, it's just like this beautiful, beautiful effect of everything feels better. So then I found Common Sense Organic, which my lovely friend Lisa used to go to all the time, like eight years ago when she used to live in New Zealand. And now I'm like waking up to it. So then I had this epiphany and I shot a Facebook Live video going, what have I been doing all my life? Why haven't I had more organic things? Why haven't I actually been preparing beautiful, wholesome, healthy, yummy foods that give me energy and make me feel amazing? Then the next thing that I noticed was, okay, if I'm going organic in food, I want to go organic in skincare. So I went out and I researched and I bought the beautiful Antipodes range. It's gorgeous. Uh, it's really lovely. And it's awesome. Um, all organic, like Manuka honey. Oh, so good. Um, black fern, Bulgarian rose and Wairawera artesian water. Kiwi fruit, Manuka honey. Vinzanza performance, but it's just so yum. And it smells freaking amazing. And just today, my lovely mum came by and she said, your skin's looking great. I was like, yep, I actually I feel like younger from the inside. Um, so that was step four or five, I can't remember. And then people on Facebook started posting um, skincare recipes, make it home, you know, do it yourself, which I've known about for a long time, but I can actually do because I'm in one place for a month. So granted, I will say, doing any kind of challenge to get yourself back on track. It is lovely to have a base and be able to have a kitchen and access to groceries and, and stores, but I still feel you can do this pretty much from anywhere. Um, and then the next thing that's come out of it is, is changing my exercise. So about this time, right across from where I was shopping at Moore Wilson's, there's this cool place called Urban Fitness. Shout out to Mike. Mike, Michael and Dan, actually. And uh, it's this awesome kind of like, just hipster urban workout space uh, has a big roller door and inside there's boxing bags and rowing machines and dumbbells and kettlebells and bars and Olympic rings. I don't know why I'm doing all this stuff. And there I was finding myself at 6 a.m. in the morning or at 6.45 or at 10 past 12 um, in doing these crazy cool workouts that fully functionally stretch my body so much like I thought I was pretty strong and fit I had abs here like I was sore in my intercostal muscles for weeks um I everything was sore I was walking upstairs going oh god I feel really but it only lasted for like two or three days and this is me in week two and a half just kind of want to like bounce around all the time so I don't know what's happened in the last three and a half weeks I have literally transformed my world from the inside out and it all started with getting educated about why my body is amazing, why everything that I do and feed into here feeds my mind, which then feeds into everything else. So additional things that have come out of this, which I kind of thought might happen, but not in so many ways, massive, massive positivity shift. Like I'm a pretty positive person, but now I'm like in gratitude mode all the time. I'm excited about things as a result of being in gratitude mode and being excited and being positive and being happy. I've got this abundance coming into my business. I've got sponsors for my podcast. Uh, in addition to that, I've been like killing it with Airbnb recently, meeting all these awesome, lovely guests, making more money through real estate, uh, transforming my finances, get, just getting a grip on everything. So all I can say is if you start here with this beautiful body that you live in and you treat it you treat it like the queen or the king that it is then it starts here which shifts the mindset into gratitude into abundance into positivity stuff starts coming out of the woodworks to make your life awesome and things just get better and better so that's all I want to say to you invest in yourself I now fully understand what that means and this has just been this whole sort of transformation and I'm still learning. I'm learning so much and I love it. 
So part of what this video is about is linked to a big mega post where I've gone into this in more detail. So I'd love for you to leave a comment below this video and tell me what you want to do to invest in yourself, how good you will feel, how amazing you will feel when you finally start treating your body with respect and having that evolve and spill over into every aspect of your life, relationships, sex. Sex gets really good when you're feeling fit and great about yourself. Um, general all-day energy. No brain fog. Just massive clarity around everything. It's freaking amazing. So I'll link to everything below um, in this mega post that you'll see this video in. And if you're watching it on YouTube, I'll link to it below.